Hello and welcome to another Daily Muppet. In today's video, we're just going to briefly run through the sort of explosion of information that came out in the days following the final confirmation of Eric Ten Hag staying as if suddenly everything was okay and everything was moving again. So uh, we'll talk about Braintwaite, Yoro, Xerxes. I want to talk about Tony. I want to talk about some right back information and much more. So let's get into it. Someone cooked here. All right. So, first and foremost, you know, obviously we saw this huge kind of intense suddenly United have all these deals being worked on. I mean, I think we got more news yesterday than we've had in 12 months, maybe 10 months, on transfers from Braintwaite, Euro, Todibo, Xerxes, <clears throat> and I, I, everything. I mean, just articles flying. And I want to explain why in a respect. Um, it's not because they made the decision on the manager. It's, one, the simplicity that a lot of people were on holidays the last few weeks. Um, but not me, no holidays. No, um, they were on holidays the last few weeks, and so not writing articles and putting things out. A lot of journalists and a lot of club staff and people like that all take holidays at the same time. So people come back, and then the news starts flowing again. Um, two is that a lot of times people like to double confirm and double source things and run things by the club before publishing and producing. And in many instances, I would say that perhaps it suits the club to start answering questions a little more now versus answering the same question about the manager for the last two and a half weeks. So the questions start to change. Maybe it suits them to let some more of this news out there now because it covers up a little bit of what happened, at least in the news frame. I'm not talking conspiracy. I'm just saying it makes sense to have these this good news or appearance of good news start all being a little bit louder because uh, of the mess of the last few weeks finally concluding. But as I've said many times, the club have been busy, man. They have been busy behind the scenes. They have been busy. Steve Brown, Hargreaves, Wilcox, busy, busy, busy working on transfers. So let's talk about first the... Uh, Great news. Number one, obviously, our information pressing ahead on Gerard Braintwaite. Um, no problem on the personal side of things. Player wants to move. Player wants to come. Um, he's ready to go. They're opening talks with Everton. That is for sure happening. And um, in speaking with some people, right now they're pretty feeling like this deal is heading in the right direction. Um, you know, obviously, Everton are going to have to come down on the fee, but Getting to this point, there's a feeling that there will be some some kind of compromise possible and plausible here. Um, so far, it's all going according to plan. But as always, the deal is reliant on Everton coming down on the fee a bit. Now, they may say, hey, look, 70 million, that's what we want, right? And that gets reported, that gets said. In the end, you might see a deal worth 45 plus 15 to 20 in add-ons. Not all necessarily that realistic, but you end up somewhere in the middle where you get a 60, 65 million total fee, but a lot of it is not, you know, not all of that is up front. And so you end up saying, well, they didn't really compromise that much. They got pretty close to what they asked for, except it works for both parties. There's a lot of ways to structure deals. We've seen this before. There's a lot of ways to reach a compromise. So there's some hope that this will happen. There's definitely some feeling on, on Everton's side as well as United's side that this could get done but now it's you know they've, they've got to work these deals out the thing i'll say about uh omar barada is he was you know definitely a person where at city he would look and say you know he would be the one ending these drawn out things and would say once they get up to a certain point you just say no better to move on than to overspend and spend way too much city had a really good transfer policy and strategy of not of, of buying a lot of players around the 50 million mark and i think that's that's where we're aiming to at least up front um 
you know, so <clears throat> I think that um, I, I, I'm optimistic that this one will get done. But it again, it comes down to the fee here. But there's a lot of a lot of willingness to to make something work on all sides, frankly. Um, <clears throat> Lenny Yaro, as I mentioned before, was a real target. United pursuing him. Uh, David Ornstein confirmed yesterday that United are actively looking at signing him. Word for word, what I said a couple weeks ago. They're actively looking at signing him. They're actively involved in it. Do I think he's going to go to Madrid? Yes. <laughs> That's okay. He is such a talent. If he's available, you have to be in the race. And that's what United are doing. We're in the race. Madrid, ha it, 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 things go one of two ways with Madrid because they've done this before. And I, I was speaking to someone with a lot of experience on this, and, and this is why United are in the race. They go either the way of Kamavinga, where they kind of lays around and pretend they're not interested, and then they get him. But with Kamavinga, it was actually a bit different. Madrid were kind of the links were kind of quieter to Madrid at that point in time. And the links to United were being played up heavily because United really wanted him. But I had heard, if you recall that summer, that he was probably not coming to United. And um, the links kept being played up and they were trying to get Madrid to bite. This is not that. This is a case where Madrid are in for him. It's clear, it's obvious, it's expressed. But they haven't made their move. And it goes one of two ways with Madrid. They either do like Kamavinga where they'll just sort of sit around and then they'll just bite. Chua many Kamavinga, they just do that and they just go and they get it done. They also occasionally have a habit with younger players of keeping them on the hook and acting like maybe they want them and then falling away. They even did it with Donny Van de Beek. I'm not saying that worked out well, but they've done it with players like this before and then they sort of just fall away. Um, and so... They don't always jump in and grab these players in these types of situations. Sometimes they, they act like they're really interested and they almost hope the player stays and then they can pick them up for a free in a year. They've done it before like that. And so United want to hang around this and they want to be involved and they want to push the issue a little bit and they view it as an opportunity. And, and what was meant by that is that it's in excess. So if you're signing Braintway, I think usually you're not going to be signing another center back right now. But they would sign Euro. And then they would look to sell um, Maguire or Lindelof. Probably Maguire in that case. So good signs here. I think, I think you know, I think I've said before, but I think it's most likely Gerard Branthwaite would be our first signing. And uh, I still stand by that. I think it's the most likely signing at this point in time among all of these. But sitting in the back pocket, they know how to do this deal. They could do it is, of course, Todibo. Um, and... Their work, like I said before, they work on these deals in parallel. So they work on Euro, they work on Braintwaite, they work on Todibo, they work on maybe, you know, Gwehi has been linked well, uh, I think is the other name, Chalaba sitting there too. They know what it would take, and so it's not fail, then start talks, then fail, then start talks, then fail, but go, 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 push, 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 and then they can go, boom, we're taking this one, we got it. Maybe we'll get another one, boom, we got it. Or they could just say, all right, didn't get this one, bang, we got this one. And it can be quick. And that's how the, the good clubs operate. And so far, I'm optimistic of it going according to plan. Um, on Xerxes, we also got a lot of confirmation of what we've been talking about recently on Xerxes, including the identification of him and his profile as being of interest. And, and this is something I will continue to express. That's my understanding of, you know, um, the sort of, keep calling it game model, but style of play moving forward, that there's a big interest in getting a different type of striker in to have that flexibility and a different way of playing that maybe suits more players. Um, some people took what I said yesterday to just be about Rashford, but it isn't. It's about Bruno Fernandes. If you recall the partnership he had with Anthony Martial, um, his strengths at playing up you know, near that forward and being able to often make runs beyond the forward and be almost the first line in the middle to be getting into the box to be doing the things and influencing the game and attacking areas where he is best um there's a lot of players that this suits including fullbacks overlapping for the wingers all of that so there's a lot of reasons why it would help to have a this type of profile in the team and ten hog wanted it bear in mind this isn't like something he didn't want. He wanted Anthony Martial season one. Uh, and if his health had held up, we'd be playing with that kind of style of striker. He brought in Walt Weghorst, and we played well with him, even though he wasn't very good. 
because he fit that. He used Tadich at Ajax like this all the time. Um, he wanted Harry Kane. So I don't think this is something that doesn't align with Ten Hag. I think that he would love to have this type of striker in the team. So the looking at that was Xerxes. The interesting thing about it is his agent's continuing to hold the deal up with Milan. Maybe it's just about the money and the agent fee and it'll get done. We've seen this before with certain agents. Mino Raiola used to do this a lot where he'd get things advanced with a party and then pause. And there'd be some claim that it's about this or this. And then out the blue, he moved him to a different club who came in for him. Sometimes it's about playing that game to get other clubs to get involved. And maybe it's not us. Maybe he wants Arsenal to come in for him. But you never know. You never know. And United will, will see if they can convince him because they have a strong interest. It's not the only one. Um, definitely in, in recent days, I've been asking about Ivan Tony. Um, and I'm definitely told there's, there's interest there for sure. Um, at the right price. They don't want to pay 60, 70 million for Ivan Tony at his age. Um, you know, but if there's a belief he can be had for 40 to 50, then he also fits the mold and would, would, would fit in there well. But um, maybe it's a backup option. Um, there's others that I'm, I can't give a name out at the moment now that I'm looking into, but I definitely see evidence of this different profile wanting to be brought in at striker. And that doesn't say anything against Rasmus Holland at all. It's about having multiple ways of doing things and maybe a little bit more balance in the team. Um, on Ten Hag's deal, obviously there's a lot of talk about his new contract. And, you know, the major aspect of this that... Oh, the other name that was, of course, mentioned sort of randomly a few weeks ago was, was Cunha from, from Wolves. And he's exactly that type of player. He's practically an advanced 8-10 or false 9, whatever you'd call it. He's basically exactly in that role, too. Um, I don't know how the interest is for him, but certainly he fits that too. Um, the other aspect, of course, is the uh, you know Ten Hag deal. Um, the things that need to be resolved, and they do need to be resolved, and this is what it'll go around. Um, there's been articles detailing some of the hurdles they're going to have to get through. The, again, as I said in the video yesterday, I think everybody agreed on wanting, 95% wanting it to be a club-led way of doing things, and that includes the model, that includes the style, that includes the recruitment, that includes all of those things. And um, and I really hope they can reach an agreement on that um, moving forward because it's going to affect all those transfers. It's going to affect all those transfers, and it's going to affect who stays and who goes. And we really have to keep an eye on the situations of Bruno and Rashford this summer. Um, but an agreement on this contract with a club-led style of play and recruitment would go a long way to help settle those situations too. And I think that that's just worth mentioning. Um, but, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see stuff about more stuff coming out about Bruno and Rashford in the next few weeks. Um, and, and not just them, but there's other people that the club need to sit down with and make sure they have an understanding of, you know, how, what we're doing moving forward. And I think Ten Hag's contract will be significant in that. Um, so uh, I'm hopeful there that things work out, but they do need to be. At right back, obviously, there's been potential talk of, of Wambasaka still leaving. Um, sure. And that is definitely possible. If he does, I don't know of a lot of names. I think Jeremy Frimpong is not the one. I've said that for a long time. I don't think he fits as a right back. I don't think he, he's... I, I don't see it, and he's also quite expensive, and I just don't think they have the money to go there. A name that is interesting that I think I've mentioned before, I don't know if I have on videos or not, but that I was told quite a while back about right back is Coyote. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Coyote from Fiorentina. Someone that has been at least watched in the past. Uh, and not that far in the past, but somewhat recently by United. So that would be one I would keep in mind. Um, I don't know I, I don't know much more about it, but that. Um, Got to follow up on it and see if there's any genuine interest in it beyond that but that's just one i've been told to keep watch on obviously the one area we don't hear anything about still funnily enough even though everything says we're going to get a midfielder is the midfield and i think that obviously we need to move casemiro on there's potentially some doubts about the saudi thing so you know we got to figure it out but i don't know maybe he could move to the mls or something like that you know but it's it's quite obvious that his time at united is probably nearing its end um 
well reached its end. But uh, so we don't have I don't have any updates on names there beyond what I've been saying before. Um, moving on to Olise. Uh, obviously, you know, I reported yesterday morning that early, early before anybody else that Chelsea had opened talks with Crystal Palace over Elise. Um, but they've also other clubs also have. And I think United are still very interested in this. Um, I'm definitely hearing that should, once they can resolve Greenwood and have a line on resolving Sancho, that they're more likely to start to engage in this. I think they believe that, you know, Elise is going to wait and see who agrees, deals with the clubs, and then decide on his future. So hopefully he's not in a rush. Um, a big part of that is going to depend on how much do we spend at center back. You know, if we get Gerard and Euro, I don't see how we can end up stretching all the way to a right winger this summer. Um, if we get a good deal on Braithwaite, Xerxes at striker, that goes a long way for those sales being able to be used for direct replacements in those areas. But otherwise, budgets are going to have to supplement into other more needed areas, and that is going to be a factor. So a lot of it is going to be based on what kind of deals we can agree on those first two areas of center back and and uh, and probably striker. Um, yeah, the final thing I want to mention in, in today's video to keep this kind of brief, though, is obviously you have this overhaul to Carrington. I spoke about uh, the stuff on the, you know, I spoke about stuff on the uh, medical things like that and the, the rehabilitation, the rehab of things. And um, the Carrington overhaul is definitely part of that. OK, so I think we'll find out more about it, but that's very promising. Wanted to keep this short and just get into some things and, and cover what we've talked about, which is some basic updates. So that's what I have for today. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn notifications on. See you in the next one.